Okay, finally, we're going to get to the second lesson. This is where normally we would have a discussion where we talk about your frustrations or things that you really like about reading and writing. Um, the fact, basically, that reading and writing are very hard. They are not things that normally come easy. Now, some of us have a gift with language. Some of us had parents that read to us a lot when we were kids, and it, it facilitated our ability to learn to read and write. But the bottom line is, it's something we have to learn. It doesn't come naturally. And it can be extremely frustrating. What, what doesn't help the situation is that English teachers, whether you're talking about elementary school, middle school, or high school, are taught how to teach you to read, but nobody teaches them how to teach writing skills. So if you're lucky, you've got somebody who's just darn good at it, but for the most part, we just kind of have to figure it out as we go. Understand that reading and writing are unnatural. It's not something that comes instinctively to us. Like, you watch a young child, you watch an infant, they will teach themselves how to stand up, how to walk, how to run. They will, if you take a small child and put it in a swimming pool, put it in a, a pool of water, they will instinctively swim. It's the only thing that slows us down on learning how to swim is we panic and get scared. Oh my God, I'm going to drown. Uh. So, um, you know, the, there are things that just come to us naturally. We imitate what other people are doing around us, and that's how we learn how to speak. Reading and writing don't work that way. Reading and writing, you have to be taught. Notice that no other animal reads or writes. And we've got some that can imitate it to a certain degree, but really... We had to teach them how to do it. So if you see a chimpanzee or gorilla that can write, it's because we, t we spent years teaching that sucker how to do it. Learning, it's not easy. So don't get frustrated if you don't like reading or writing, if it's difficult for you. It takes a lot of skill. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time to do it. Understand that writing was invented. It was invented back in about 5200 BC in Mesopotamia, which today we would call Iraq. Um, it's over 7,000 years old, but remember, the human species has been on the planet for over 200,000 years. So really, writing is still relatively new in the history of our species. Um, and understand also that nobody read until there was something to read, so writing had to be invented first. So like any skill, once you've learned how to do it, once you've learned the basics of reading and writing, you have to practice it or you don't get better. Um, it's just like any sport, any musical instrument that you play, um, anything. If you want to get better at it, you have to keep practicing. That means, especially for, for reading and writing, you have to keep reading. doesn't matter what you read, just keep reading may not be fun at first, but if you persevere, you persevere, you will get better at it. So, again, it's frustrating at first, it's aggravating, it can even be boring. But after your skills start improving and it gets to be less of a struggle, it's not so bad. Now, you're going to be doing an assignment in a little bit here where you're going to tell me about your writing and writing skills. I do this to all my students. I had this one student who wrote basically the perfect essay, Why I Can't Write. And so I want you to read through the next few um, slides here and read her essay, read what she had to say about it. And she's really putting herself down. She's attacking herself right and left. She leaves herself no mercy. And she's really not that bad of a writer. She's pretty good, actually. So you'll go through... I think, oh, there's only the two slides. Okay, so read those two slides. Then you'll get to this point. This is my response to her, and this is my response to you as well. If any of these problems that she mentioned apply to you, I want you to think about this. One of the first things she says is, I have never been attracted to reading and writing. If I had to choose to eat Brussels sprouts or pick up a book and write about it, I would most likely eat the Brussels sprouts. Now, for those of you who are fans of Brussels sprouts, understand that most people don't like them. They're too strong, too bitter. 
Of course, they're probably being cooked wrong, too. But that's beside the point. Understand that, you know, you're not alone. Most people actually don't like to read and write. It's the exceptional person that really enjoys reading and writing. Um, part of it is that it has to appeal to the abstract part of your brain. When our brain looks at language, it's got to sit there and take the symbol and somehow convert it into meaning and decide, okay, these letters give us sound. Now we put those sounds together and they create words. Now we put those words together and they create sentences. Now we're starting to build meaning. And the more complicated the sentences get and the longer the paragraphs get and then we get into whole chapters, there's more meaning getting piled and piled in there. And our brains really have to work hard to decipher and decode all of this. So it's frustrating. And it takes a lot of reading and work to get there. Trust me, when I was at your level, Yes, I was a very voracious reader. I loved reading. I still wasn't quite up to Shakespeare. <laughs> I wasn't up to a lot of the stuff my teachers wanted me to read. I was reading it and getting the basic understanding of the plot, but I was missing a lot of the deeper stuff. So what? You get what you get out of it. I think the reason I do not like to read is because I never understand the content. I have to reread pages over and over again until I get it, and even sometimes I still do not comprehend. Reading has always been a struggle. Instead of me working through my problems, I've just avoided it. Again, the only way to get better is to keep practicing, keep at it. It doesn't matter what you're reading. If you're reading comic books, magazines, um, entertainment magazines, wrestling magazines, sports magazines, car magazines, whatever, fashion magazines, um, read. Read stories. If you're reading Harry Potter, so Harry Potter is actually fairly complex. Um, so congratulate yourself if you've read Harry Potter. Um, it doesn't matter. Reading will continue to cause your brain to work and exercise and start deciphering. Remember, this is an abstract skill. This is something that you really have to engage and think about and keep working it over and over in your head. It's not something you do once and put down. It's got to sit there and simmer like a soup and, and slowly cook and develop into something. I like to write, oh, I'm sorry, I write like I talk. I do not know how to sound sophisticated, probably because my vocabulary is as big as a fourth grader's. Well, first of all, her vocabulary is above the average Americans. And so what? She writes like she talks. We all do. Everybody starts that way. It's the very sophisticated writers who don't write like they speak. Don't worry about it. Especially here in college, we don't care. We don't, we're not looking for sophisticated writing. We're looking to see that you can convey meaning. Can I understand what you're trying to say? So, yeah, write like you speak. Remember, understand that the average American has an 8th grade reading level. You're in college. You're above average. Every time I start to write, I never know how to begin. <laughs> Writer's block. Looking at that blank piece of paper and trying to figure out how to start or that blank screen on the computer. Everybody has this problem, and the only way to get around it is to just start writing. Don't sit there and try to think of the perfect beginning, because you'll spend hours trying to get there. The best thing to do is just start writing, just like you do in a free write. You just put the pencil to the paper, or put your fingers to the keyboard, and just let the words spill out. Because this is the beauty of writing. You can go back and edit. You can go back and fix it and rework it before anybody sees it. Not like talking on the internet, where you hit send and all of a sudden everybody sees it and you realize, oops, I shouldn't have done that. Um, yeah. So once you've written your first couple of drafts, then you go back and worry about making that perfect beginning. So right now, until you get the information on the page, you have nothing to work with. So don't worry about that perfect beginning. Just get your thoughts out there, get the ideas out there, and then start working with it. That's going to be our main goal this whole semester. I've tried to improve my skills, but I haven't had a teacher who's been able to help me yet. I know this is going to sound like a cop-out, but the best teacher is you. I really can't teach you anything. You have to be willing to learn. You have to be open to the information, and you have to work with it. I can throw information at you all I want. It doesn't do any good if you don't practice the skills, if you don't take it home with you and think about it and try to apply it somewhere. Um, this goes for any subject. It's not just writing. Anything. If you don't make it your own, 
you're not going to learn anything from it. Okay, I heard that, so what? See, if, if you could learn just by me speaking to you, heck, you wouldn't need me. You could take a book, read it, and figure it all out on your own. You have to engage. You don't engage, you don't learn. So this student, she was given multiple opportunities to stay after. In fact, I used to let class out a half an hour early, and people would stay for that extra half an hour and get assistance with their writing. She was always the first one to bolt out the door. So don't take her too seriously here when she says she hasn't found a teacher who's been able to help her. I get off topic when I write. Well, hell, who doesn't? We all get off topic. It's easy to do. The problem is you have to be able to recognize when you're getting off topic. A good thing to do is set yourself time limits. Say that I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever you're comfortable with. And when you're done that time, stop. Don't keep pushing yourself to keep going further and further and further. Or if you if you run out of ideas and you don't know what to say next, don't torture yourself. Stop. Walk away. Come back to it later. And then try to pick back up. And then you'll see whether or not you were really on track. If it was going where you wanted it to go. It, trust me, your writing will be better for it. So don't force yourself to try to do everything in one sitting. I tend to put in useless sentences so that I can make the criteria. Ah. <sighs> This is the old thing where my teacher said it has to be three to four pages long, or it has to be 5,000 words. And now that's bugging us. It's in the back of our head saying, I've got to meet this page limit. i got to meet the word count. Gotta... Don't worry about that. Because you can fix it later in editing. Again, get your main ideas on the paper. Get your main thoughts out there. And then you work on it from there. When we give you assignments, we know approximately how long they should be based on the quality of the information we're looking for. If I say a three-page assignment, I figure that you really can't explain this in less than three pages. And that if you've gone more than four pages, you're overdoing it. So teachers really do give some thought to this before they give you this the page count or the word count. They really understand what it takes to properly explain the assignment. This isn't just some random thing we throw at you. And usually it's developed over time. After several times teaching this, I've realized, oh, you know, this particular assignment can be done in just two pages. I don't need to force them into a third. So, oh no, don't do this. Go back. Ah, uh, why, why? Where were we? Okay, there we go. Oh, oops. okay. So, don't let yourselves get all upset about page count and such. If you find yourself coming up with only three pages and you need four, that's where you go back and find some research to put in and, and expand it a little bit. Or see if there's a way that you can explain a little bit more about something. Trust me, there's ways to make that without just adding useless stuff. She uses spark notes instead of reading the chapter, so she has to spend hours of reading. Spark notes or cliff notes or any of these uh, summaries that are online, they're helpful mainly if you don't have the time to do the original reading. But here's the problem. They don't go into the depth. They don't go into the detail. They're just summaries. They're just giving you some quick ideas of what's going on in there. So you're going to miss a lot. You're going to lose a lot. All right, so you have to take a literature class and they're asking you to read a book a week. Yeah, I'd go to Cliff Notes or Spark Notes myself in that situation. I would read some of them all the way through, but the ones that I find difficult or boring, I'd be right on those Spark Notes. But you can't do it every single time. Somewhere along the line, you have to sit down and really do the reading. Um, as I say here in this paragraph, it's just like, okay, I don't feel like cooking, so every day we're eating McDonald's. You're not getting the nutrition. You're not getting the value. You're just, you're going to be missing out. So now what I want you guys to do, I want you to take 10, 15 minutes and just do a free write. And what's a free write? That means you just let your thoughts flow. You don't worry about spelling. You don't worry about grammar. Uh, you don't worry about editing to make sure your sentences are complete or anything like that. Just let the thoughts come out. And what I want you to do is just talk just like that girl did about how you feel about writing, about where you think your skills are, where do you think your weaknesses are, what do you think your strengths are. What would you like to accomplish in this course? Just whatever. Let it come out. Let me know because it's going to help me focus this course. This way if I get this and everybody says, oh, I'm a great writer, I get to skip a lot of stuff that we wouldn't have, we would normally go into. So take about 10 minutes 
and let me know how you feel about yourself as a writer. Okay, and then when you're done with that, tune into the next video.